Principal Deputy Director of National Intelligence Stacey Dixon highlighted the intensifying strategic competition with China and Russia as one of two key sets of challenges that define the strategic landscape today. Read more highlights from her keynote speech at the 9th Annual Intel Summit. Cisco has agreed to acquire Splunk for approximately $28 billion in a transaction that will enable the San Jose, California-based technology company to expand its capabilities meant to help organizations harness the power of artificial intelligence to improve security and digital resilience. Maxar Technologies has separated into two separate businesses, one focused on spacecraft manufacturing and the other on satellite imagery. Robert Fleming will take the helm of the space systems business of Northrop Grumman, assuming the corporate vice president and sector president roles on October 9. Aerospace is combining its space and defense systems business segments into a single organization to align its end-to-end -end operations with the structure and strategic direction of its Department of Defense customers. Parsons has secured a potential seven-year, $160 million contract to develop hardware and software products for the U.S. intelligence community. Neil Cronimus, former chief technology officer of SEV-1 Tech Strategic Division, was tapped to serve as senior vice president of systems integration at Maximus. The U.S. Navy has selected eight companies out of 31 proposers for a multiple award construction contract with a maximum amount of $1 billion. Join Potomac Officers Club's 2023 Homeland Security Summit on November 15, 2023. Visit potomacofficersclub.com slash events. The Air Force Research Laboratory has begun soliciting white papers for a potential five-year, $498 million broad agency announcement that seeks to support research, development, integration and testing of computing technologies, architectures and techniques. The State Department has approved Saudi Arabia's request to procure combat vehicle fleet services from the U.S. government for $500 million.